Day two, I'm text right, uh, test riding the Thruxton in the Arizona mountains. Thank you so much to Triumph for flying me to Arizona to test ride your bikes, including the one of my dream bikes. Yes, I do have like 12 dream bikes. We're only gonna talk about one of them in this video, the Triumph Thruxton RS 2020. So this is going to be the last video in my Triumph Immersion series where I talk about the whole event, what it was in a nutshell, Triumph invited 40 influencers, including YouTubers, photographers, journalists, uh, me, to go to Arizona and test ride their newest line of bikes through the city of Tucson and Arizona mountains. It was the best 24 hours of my life. I know a lot of you are going to think that Anything good I have to say about this bike is because Triumph flew me to Arizona to test ride these bikes. Um, this is an egg before the chicken kind of scenario. Triumph flew me to Arizona because I was already obsessed with Triumph engines after test riding over 10 bikes in 2017 because I'm a nutcase and wanted to test ride as many bikes as possible before I upgraded and found that more than all the bikes I test rode, Triumphs are the smoothest. They're my favorite bikes. And I'm a little psychotically obsessed with them. And that's why I went on this trip. Oh no, there we go. Just keep that in mind that this review is coming from someone who absolutely loves the Triumph engine and the way it rides. Now, if you're looking for a review about specs and torque and all that stuff, you're in the wrong place. Go to the Triumph website page. They have a, they have a page called specification or go to, the, go to the Triumph review video. That's where you're gonna find it. What you're gonna find in this video is talking about how riding a Triumph Thruxton makes you feel and how it feels through mountain curves, riding in the city, and how freaking beautiful it is. So, if you're familiar with the Triumph Classic line, it's not to be confused with the Triumph Street Cup. The Street Cup looks a lot like the Thruxton. It, it even has that cute little pop butt at the end. But the Triumph Street Cup is 800cc and the Thruxton is 1200cc. I confused the two for a while and I was very embarrassed to admit that. The only bikes that look this gorgeous are old cafe racer bikes. So they've become recently really popular, uh, especially in movies. Um, you see a Triumph Scrambler that looks, that's kind of like the off-roading Thruxton um, in Jurassic World. Uh, pretty sure Emma Roberts was riding one in Ride. Kate Blanchett rode off into the sunset in a Triumph Thruxton at the end of Oceans 8, 11, whichever one has all the girls in it. Um, looking so cool. And they all kind of resemble the Bonneville, that classic look that's been around for decades. The Thruxton, the Scrambler, the Street Cup, these are all new. Now, what's really cool about the Triumph Thruxton is that even though it's 1200 cc, it weighs about the same as its 800 cc counterpart, the Street Cup. Um, so when I got on it, I'm used to my 401 pound Triumph Street Triple R. Um, at the time, my bike was lowered, so I was flat footing it. Not anymore. So standing on the Thruxton, for me, I'm 5'3.75 inches. My inseam is 31 inches, if I measured it correctly, crotch to floor. Um, I couldn't flat foot it, and uh, but it was really light. At this point, I didn't know about uh, one foot down, which is what you should do. Do not tiptoe a bike. You'll be so much more stable if you just put one foot down when you're standing. I uh, Now I know that. 
but it was really light and for me who's so used to who at the time was so used to flat footing bikes I was pretty stable with it terrified but because it's not really heavy and not too high it felt pretty maneuverable so riding around in the city traffic which is never fun was totally manageable uh, it's kind of narrow too so the closest thing I could think to compare it to is the um, BMW the BMW R9T. I have test ridden that. I don't have a video on it. I have test ridden that. And comparatively, it's, it's, I was also tiptoe on that, but it, the BMW R9T is so wide. Like, it feels weird. Like, those cylinders sticking out on either side, it's so wide. And to me, it just feels awkward. And it's, after a rope riding triumphs, like, nothing is as smooth to me. So anything I get on, I'm like, okay. So the BMW R90 is the closest thing I can equivalent to it. it kind of has that cafe racer look. And they're, I think the R90 is 1200cc. And I would, I would definitely choose the uh, Thruxton 1200 or the Street Cup if you're trying to save a few bucks in insurance and you're not a speed demon. Just because it is so much more narrow and it just feels so much lighter and more maneuverable because of that. In this picture, we're kind of off-road but we didn't really ride there we just kind of pulled the bikes in so I learned this the hard way a few years ago don't use your front brake whenever you go on gravel or you're going down whoa whoops oh crap luckily I knew that when I was on this beautiful specimen Thruxton but riding around town in the city what you might use a want a cafe racer for because they're usually lower cc it did great the Thruxton was, it was comfortable. It did, they never have problems with engine being too hot. It's not a Ducati. Oh my gosh, my right leg is burning. <sighs> Rides really smooth. It's narrow, so it's nimble. So it's easy, easy, easy to maneuver when you're not moving, like when you're just standing. So that's great. And then we took it through some curvier roads out of town. And again, it, it just feels so nimble and smooth. So it did great there too. So that's probably the other thing that if you want to ride around in the city, some people that go for cafe racers just ride around with it in the city. They're caf old, usually these really vintage bikes don't do well on like at highway speeds or um, far off in the if you want to go out far in the country or do curvy roads because they're just not very maneuverable and smooth, and sometimes they break down a lot. So that's the great thing about getting a new classic out of the Triumph line. You've got the technology digitally and in your bike of the modern age and that higher CC so you can take it out of the city. You can go on the highway and it's still gonna ride so smooth. This one, oh, this one doesn't even have a windscreen I just realized. Um, and there were a couple times that I blipped that throttle and it, the wind buffeting on it wasn't bad at all for a naked bike. I just realized that now. So that was cool. So the person that I could see getting a Triumph Thruxton would be someone who has a slightly more upscale taste, maybe likes a little bit of luxury. Triumphs are, I would consider them a luxury brand. I don't know if anyone else does, but I do. Yeah, my 6,000 mile service, $700 makes it feel like it was. Now this is not, obviously not a bike that you're going to be ripping on the track and taking to a lot of ho slow speed skills and hopefully not roughing it up around dirt and stuff because look how beautiful it is. I would think this is for someone who would kind of want to use it as a commuter. Although it is comfortable, maybe not necessarily very long trips or camping or stuff like that, um, but someone who wants a nice, a, a, a good, sexy looking commuter that'll do great on the highway, great around town, and you'll look good riding it too. If I had my, my sport bike, uh, an off-road bike, if I ever learned to ride off-road, and one of the classic triumphs like this Thruxton in my garage, if I had a garage, I wouldn't need anything else. Nothing else. If you want to see the other videos in the, the Triumph Immersion event, click this playlist right over here. And if you want to see a video that YouTube thinks you'll like, click right over here. 
Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.